Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett Land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County, 76 degrees, going up to a high of 89 with some scattered showers this afternoon, so it's going to rain. Yeah, I know that's nothing new for Georgia. Me and my uncle were out, um, was it Monday? Tuesday. We are out, no, it was Monday. We are out Monday, and um, it was beautiful when we left, and as we were coming back in, it got really, really cloudy. And I was like, is it going to rain today? He's like... Audrey, we're in Georgia. The chances of that is probably yes. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It rains a lot here, y'all. And I remember now, listen, my uncle, myself, we were all born in Georgia. I was raised in Jersey. He was raised here in Georgia. He came to Jersey when he was, like, much older. And um, so we should be used to the rain, um, but we're not. So it rains a lot. But it's okay because it's hot, too, in the summertime. Like, it's extremely hot. Like, 89 degrees is like, oh, that's a nice day. That's because it's not too hot. All right, but anyway, it's a beautiful day here. Today is National Soft Ice Cream Day. Don't that sound delicious? That sounds amazing. Like a nice, let me tell y'all what I like. I like ice cream sundae with hot fudge and walnuts and whipped cream. That's all I like. That's all I need on it. So a nice cup of soft ice cream with some hot fudge and some walnuts and a spoonful of whipped cream. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? <sighs> y'all know I'm hungry. I didn't eat yet. So that's what, that's what I do. Anyway, today is hump day Wednesday, y'all. Y'all done made it to the middle. I like when I say that. Y'all done made it to the middle. It's the middle of the week. I don't know why they call it the middle. It's really seven days. Well, I guess it is. It's seven and seven. Okay, yeah. So it's hump day anyway. Today is August the 19th. I'm going to get ready to do your harvest course brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen. Um, And we're going to kick it off like we always do. And that is with Aries. Communication will be your strong point and you should be able to persuade others to see things your way. Opportunities to show your worth will enhance your reputation and bring possible advancements. You may be somewhat emotional concerning a private matter today. All right, you're going to be a little emotional today, Aries. It's private, so that's why you're going to be emotional. Don't tell nobody. Just deal with it. Just handle it. Unless it's something you just need to talk to somebody about. And if you do, find that person you can really confide in that's going to keep your business. Don't tell it to everybody. Can't tell everybody your business. Taurus, you should not get involved in joint ventures. You're ready to take action and take over. Ferret out information that will hold them responsible. Listen here, you ready to take action. You're ready to take action and take over. Take action and take over. All right. But listen, don't get in. Why are you doing all that, Taurus? Do not get involved in joint ventures. Not today. It's not in the stars for you today. Don't do it. Gemini. You will be accident prone if you aren't careful today. A new relationship could be yours if you get out of get out with friends. You will be able to take be able to work with fine detail today. All right, so you looking for some new love, uh Gemini? You got to go hang out with your friends today. You can find yourself in a new relationship. Hopefully it's a good one. Full of love, joy, purpose and passion that's going to remain. Yes, I'm going to put that out for you today in the universe. Cancer you need to be around friends and family. Now's the time uh, for completing hobbies that you've been working on for a long time. Curb your mood swings. They could result in loneliness. Yeah, curb the mood swings, cancer, because cancer can go through them, boy. Let me tell you something. I live with one. My baby is a cancer. She's been pretty good, though. I ain't going to say that too loud. She's been pretty good, though, because she'll go through a mood swing. I'm like, oh, Lord, she having one, and I kind of just stay out of her way. All right, Leo. Money-making opportunities will surface. This will not be the day to have minor surgery. Don't do something silly just to get back at your mate. Yeah, tip for tat ain't good, Leo. So don't do it. Focus on some money-making opportunities. Focus on the ones that's going to surface, right? Here's the thing. Do your due diligence. Don't just accept the first opportunity that comes along because it may not be a good one. Just may not be. Virgo. Secret affairs could, could cause upsets. A secret you know what I say about the secret. Be careful not to sign your time or your cash away. Accomplishment is yours if you direct yourself accordingly. Listen here, Virgo. Y'all know what I be talking about. When I talk about uh, secrets, if it's a secret, don't do it. That's all. Secret affairs could cause upset. Yes, because it's a secret. That's the problem. 
the problem nine times out of ten is because it is a secret. If it's a secret, you might want to, you know, rethink it. All right, Virgo? All right, I'm just saying. All right, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the song and give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Nodal Astrologer Micah Thyssen. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. Stay tuned. So do you. So welcome back to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thyssen. And we're going to pick it up with Air, uh, Aries, Libra. Uh, Libra, cultural activities will prove to be quite enlightening for everyone. Travel should be on your agenda. If you are in the midst of a financial deal, this is your lucky day. Okay? Listen, Libra, this is your lucky day, baby. If you're in the midst of a financial deal, good luck to you. Lady Luck is on your side today. Scorpio, organize all the responsibilities that have have to be attended to and make sure everyone knows what to do. Discover opportunities based on the individuals you mingle with today. Try to curb your bad habits. Listen, don't be in front of people doing bad things. If you got to be in front of, look, discover opportunities based on the individuals you mingle with, mingling with. So if you're mingling today, try to curb them bad habits. Don't show the people what you, don't do it. You might miss, you might mess up a deal. Sagittarius, it's time to make professional changes. Help if you can, but more than likely it will be a sufficient just to listen just to listen. You will benefit through hidden assets and property investments. Okay. All right. You ain't really gotta say too much today, uh Sag. Just listen. Yeah, it's gonna be sufficient just to listen. Somebody just need to sound the boy, they just need to bend your ear for a minute. Now I know I know you don't got a lot of time and money is time, but take a second. Matter of fact, take two just to listen. And you got some you got some good things that's gonna be coming from some hidden 
assets and some property investments. That's a good thing. Capricorn, job changes are in order. Go for interviews or send out resumes. Everything is moving quickly just like you like it. Not everyone will be pleased with your plans. Okay? Listen, you ain't got to please everybody, Capricorn. Please yourself. Right? Not everybody's going to be pleased with your plans. Here's the thing. That's their business. It's your plans, your life. Do your thing. As long as you're not hurting anyone or hurting anything, do your thing. Aquarius. Don't expect others to live up to their promises and you won't be disappointed or find yourself stuck with delays. Abrupt changes concerning your professional position are evident. Romance may be better than you ever thought possible. All right, Aquarius. That sounds nice. I mean, really better than you ever thought possible? Like romance? Like, I'm a romantic at heart, y'all. That's why I watched the Hallmark Channel on the weekends. My husband like, oh my God, is this Hallmark? <laughs> he said that last night. He came in. So when he came in, I was doing quiet time. So I was just sitting very quiet in the dark, just taking it down because I was tired. I did a lot of work yesterday. And when the TV did come on, he goes, oh, my God, is that Hallmark? <laughs> I said no. So I didn't even watch TV yesterday. Last night, I was exhausted. So I just went to bed. But he watched basketball until basketball was watching him. It's so funny, y'all. We be watching the games, and I be looking at the um, at the screen. And when the, when the camera is kind of far back, it's zoomed out. It looks like a it looks like a video game, and when it zooms in, you can see real people because it's so weird. They playing in this bubble thing. It's crazy. It's just the time we're living in right now. Um, Pisces, uh, and I forgot to say my fellow fish, my fellow fish, Pisces. You will find better. You will feel better about yourself, and you may also meet potential lovers. Okay, fish. Take short business trips if possible. Clear up domestic chores that have been that have remained undone for some time. Yeah, see, for me, the lover part, yeah, I'm married, so that doesn't count. So for all you single fish, you can you could potentially meet your lover today. Um, take the short business trip. Would love to do that. Sounds amazing. Um, yeah, and clear up some domestic chores. I got a ton of clothes to get rid of, you know, and it's so funny because people come by and pick the clothes up, but it's just a matter of going in that closet and tackling that closet. I need to, though. I need to make room for new stuff. That's why I can't buy nothing new because I can't get rid of all the old stuff. That's what you got. Listen. Sometimes you have to get rid of the old stuff to make room for the new stuff to come in. That's my issue in my closet right now. I need to go clothes shopping, but I have a... So I lost a lot of weight. That's what happened. I lost a lot of weight. And here's the funny part. Lost a ton of weight, and I kept saying, okay, I, can, I probably could take this up. I'm probably going to adjust this. Yeah, I can't adjust none of that stuff. So I just need to get... And it's really nice clothes, so that's my other issue. Like, I'm like, man, I'm some really nice clothes. I, I, used to, I love clothes, y'all. That was my weakness. That was my drug. Clothes. Food? Not so much. Cheese and butter, yeah. But clothes? Oh, yeah. I could drop some money on some clothes. Now, and I got rid of a ton of clothes. Like, a lot. I had, like, 40 pairs of jeans. I love jeans. I had, like, 40 pairs of jeans. Um, literally, like, 40 pairs. And I still have... That's 40 pairs that I gave away. I still have some in the closet right now that I keep telling myself I, I'm going to be able to fit. Because I'm going to take them in. I'm going to adjust them. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to get rid of all of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going. that's my chore. That's the chore that's been lingering for me, those clothes in my closet. All right, so that's all the horoscopes I got for today. I'll be back again tomorrow to give you the horoscopes brought to you by Notice Charles and Michael Thyssen. But tomorrow I got a guest, and you want to listen to this guest. She's a businesswoman. She's been, you know, it's so funny. We've been networking for years, before, even before I moved to Jersey, uh, Georgia. When I was in Jersey, she lives in Georgia, too. Years we've never met in person. We've always been in each other's network, sharing things back and forth. But we've never met in person. We never even had a conversation. So tomorrow's going to be our first conversation. She does a lot of amazing things. So you want to make sure you tune in tomorrow um, <clears throat> to listen to that interview. All right, let's get on to some news you can use. So listen here. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but Georgia, yeah, Georgia is not doing good when it comes to this freaking coronavirus. So there's a, there's a story in the AJC this morning. It says Georgia reported the highest rate of new cases of the coronavirus in the country in the seven days ending on Friday. The President Trump's Corona Task Force said it is the latest report urging the state again to take a stronger action to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Listen, I don't know. I, I just don't know what to say about that. Like, we're, we're in the red zone right now. We're in the hot zone for real. For severity of outbreaks, um, we're, in, we're in a bad place. We're in a bad place. And I hate to say it, but we are in, in Gwinnett County is number two in the state 
for the coronavirus. Yeah, I mean, because people are still kind of just willy-nilly with it. Like, my niece, she just started her job, and they have sent them home to work. Like, they sent them home to work from home because it's just, it's a mess. It is a mess. Um, yeah, it's terrible. And, and yeah, in Georgia already, a, a number of local school systems have been reopened for in-person instruction through infections. Though infections have so far led a temporary school closure in Cherokee and Paulding County. Cherokee County? I think it's about 1,200 people in Cherokee County school system that's out right now on quarantine. I don't, I just don't know. I really, I really wish I could say, um, that this thing is getting better. It doesn't look better to me. And I, and I, like, I have no news. Everything I have pretty much today is about the coronavirus, some form of the coronavirus. So anyway, last week, Governor Brian Kemp made the modest concessions to his long stated objection to the mask mandate. But he has steadfastly resisted retreating from Georgia's permissive limits on restaurant businesses and gatherings. And I get it. Everybody's suffering. And if they have to close down again, some of those businesses may not make it. But it's only so much you can do. Like, if you have a restaurant, right, and you can't even fill it up to capacity, like, I don't even see how long they're going to be able to make it. Because when we, when we went to Olive Garden, um, and I've been three, I've been to Olive Garden three times since, these, since the coronavirus outbreak. They sit us in a corner. By ourselves, they have everybody spread out. When I look around the room as a business person, that's not a lot of people. Because my check is always the same. I eat the same stuff. It's no more than $23. And I know that helps, but in the big scheme of things, when you got a $10,000 overhead just for rent, forget about employees and inventory and, and accounting practices, that's a lot of money. And you're not making that money. Right? Even though they have instituted takeout, you know, curbside takeout and things like that, I still don't think they're going to... Listen, y'all heard me say yesterday with all of the pizza huts is shutting down. I, I don't know if Corona had anything to do with it. I think it probably played a part. Um, but I just, I feel like, and I get it. Like the business owners, they have businesses to run. Heck, I run a business, you know? And so I understand it's just sad. Like this whole thing is just, I, I wish we could have got caught this before it got this bad. And and the, the sad thing about it is it's just, it's getting worse. Because people are tired. They don't want to sit in the house anymore. Heck, I don't even want to sit in the house. It's just it's because you just don't, you know? And it's sad. But anyway, listen. They they you know, we're doing we're doing the testing. We're trying to keep this thing, but if if you don't go get tested, you don't know. I haven't gotten tested yet. My husband's been tested, my daughter's been tested, my uncle's been tested. I haven't been tested. Neither my mother no no, my mother my mama's been tested. I think I'm probably the only one that haven't been tested. <laughs> yeah, so I'm afraid to get tested. I don't think I have it because I've been pretty good. And I've been pretty cautious. Now, do I think I had it before? Yeah, I think I had it when I came back from 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 um the conference in March because I was sick. I was a little bit sick before I left, and I was sick when I got back. Me and my partner, we went together. She went home sick. I came home sick. We didn't infect our spouses, though, so maybe we weren't sick. I don't know. Anyway. If you got to go out, if you're in Georgia, if you're anywhere in the world right now, just try to protect yourself. You know, if you want to read the full story, go to AJC.com and you'll see the story there under Gwinnett County, under um, under the AJC. Um, so State Representative Sam Parks was on, uh, was a part of the Democratic Convention speak, uh, talk last night, and he was talking about the impact that, that COVID-19 has had on our teachers. Listen, we already know that a lot of the teachers are not happy to be to go back in the classroom. And so yesterday I talked about them getting the buses ready to to, um, to go and start picking up the students. A lot of those teachers are not. They have kids at home. They have family members at home. But then the parents, the poor parents, you know, the teachers in Georgia, they're stressed out. The parents are stressed out because they're trying to work a full-time job and full-time child care. It's, it's, this thing has, this is so bad. And I don't, I don't mean to be like harping on this, but when I think about where we are, you know, my daughter... She and I was talking about, you know, if she has to go back to work, what what's going to happen to the baby? I'm, I work longer hours than pretty much anybody else except my husband. Like, I get up early. I go to bed late because I work late. And so if she has to go back to work, what, how, how, how are we going to do that with the baby? Like, right now, everything works out fine because she's not working, but she may go back. And if she goes back, if they're not working from home, how is that going to work? And so we have to figure that out because I can't really see sending my sugar into um into a daycare. I can't. I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
you know, I know my daughter has to go to work and I know I'm home working from home, but we'll figure it out. And I get it. Like, I don't, that's my granddaughter, but it's still like something that I worry about. Like, I can't see sending her to school. Like, I just can't see her. I can't see doing that. We'll figure it out, though. And prayerfully, these people will figure it out, too. I mean, it's a sad thing, but, you know, Representative Park, you know, he was on there talking about, well, so so Gwinnett was on national TV net last night talking about this because, you know, he said teachers are upset because they got to go back into the classroom, you know. Park highlighted, highlighted the Gwinnett County Pub, Public School decision to have teachers return to work during the pandemic, a move that has caused several educators in Georgia, largest school system, to raise concern about their safety. I mean, that's where we are. All right, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So listen, um, when that commission is the latest decision to send out mail-in ballots application to September the 1st, <laughs> excuse me, when that county's nearly 600,000 voters will have to wait two more weeks to find out if the county will send out, send them mail-in ballots, um, applications for this fall's general election. You know, it's been so much turmoil around the postage service right now. Um, our president, feels like it's going to be corrupt and all this craziness, which is not, you know, I feel like, it's here's my thing, right? If you are a person of integrity, and this is my thing, 
if I'm a person of integrity, if I'm going to get into a race, right? Let's say I was going to be into a, a potato sack race. I'm getting into the potato sack race. I got into the race. I'm not going to make excuses about why I'm going to lose. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to fight my fight the best I can. And if I lose, I lose, right? To me, that's being a person of integrity. I'm not trying to jimmy rig my 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 potato sack and put like a, a motor inside my potato sack to beat the other person. I'm not trying to do that because I have integrity. And so the fact that someone thinks that the postal service is jimmy rigged, um, so they're gonna lose the election, to me that's that's not a person of integrity. I'm just saying that's my opinion. If you got an opinion, go to goodmorninggwinnett.com. And there's a speaker, there's a little microphone that's in purple on the right-hand side where it says your story. Share what you got to say, and I'll be happy to talk about it on the show. I just feel it's crazy, and it's not helping anybody. It's not helping It's not helping him, because just as many people that will vote one way, they're going to vote the other way. So if any, nobody, so what are you saying? So no, Well, maybe that's, maybe that's the plan. If nobody can cast a vote, the president stays in the chair. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I can see people riding around to the house and putting out um, pink flags on their mailbox for people to come around and pick up their, their ballots. I see that happening. I don't think that's going to happen. The people that are campaigning, I don't see that happening. Like, it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to take a community of people to go around and get those ballots and make sure they get to the, to the polling. I don't see that happening. But anyway, um, right now... Um, a proposal to send out applications as well as pay an estimated five hundred and sixteen thousand dollars to cover postage for return envelopes for the ballots had been on the commission's agenda for Tuesday. Instead of making a decision on it, however, the county leaders decided um delay delay to delay voting until September the first, until their September the first meeting. Because they don't know what it's gonna be like. Like we we have no idea. Like the postal service, the general, whoever he is, he's Jimmy Rigg. He, it's just so terrible. Here's my thing too, right? And I guess, I guess this is just a part of life. There are some people out there who just have no conscience. Like they have none. Like they just do stuff. And I'm saying to myself, how could you really do that? Like how could you in good conscience do some of the things you do? But I just realized they don't have a conscience. That's why they do the things they do. Like good people with conscience, they, they, they don't do certain things. When you find yourself doing stuff that's just downright wrong, you don't have a conscience. You're just not a person of integrity. You're just awful. And some of these people just are. And it is, it is what it is. But anyway, to read the full story about the ballots and what's going to happen next, go to GwinnettDailyPost.com and you'll see the whole story there. It's a long story. I can't read it all. So you go there and check it out. You know what I mean? Like I just... Some people, I, <clears throat> I just don't know, y'all. I don't know. Anyway, here's something that sounds fun. They should do this. and See, if they did this in, in, in Gwinnett, I might be able to participate. So make plans now for Lowe's Burns Community Yard Sale. That sounds like fun. Whether you're looking to buy or sell, Lowe's Burns Community Yard Sale will have something for you. It was originally planned for May 16. The sale was postponed because of everything that's going on with the pandemic, of course, like everything else. The city has taken precautions to help ensure the public safety, however, and the event is scheduled for September the 19th. Yep. So if you want to get out there and sell some stuff, you can. The sale location has been moved from the Lilburn City Park Greenway parking lot to the Railroad Avenue parking lot. There will be fewer vendor spaces this time in order to maintain an 8-foot distance. So they're not even doing 6 feet. They're doing 8 feet. Um, to, to maintain an eight-foot distance between each one. The city's website states, vendors can rent a space for $20 if you registered um, by September the 4th. And if you register by September 4th, it's $20. If you register after September the 4th, it's going to be $30, right? So if you got some stuff, maybe I should go over there. Then I got to pack all that stuff in my car. Yeah, I don't know about all that. They're going to have hand sanitizing stations throughout the site, and the city encourages everyone to wear a face mask. Just wear your mask, y'all. It's not so hard. It's not hard at all, actually. Just put it on your face and wear it. Um, vendors typically sell furniture, clothing, toys, china, linen. I might go. Linen, books, electronic, household goods, and more stuff that you would find at a at a regular yard sale. So you're going to find it in this position. So for more information about how to register, remember, after September 4th, the price goes up to um, $30. Right now, vendor spaces are $20. I'm, I bet that's going to be huge. It's probably going to have a lot of people out there. I probably won't go. Too many people. 
But anyway, go to the city of com for more information about that um, event. And if you got stuff to sell, I'm just going to pack all mine up, y'all, and just call the people so they can come get it. This is a lot of stuff. And I'm looking at a picture right here on the AJC of one that they had before. It's a, it looks like a flea market. You know what's crazy? I haven't seen flea markets down here, right? Um, I haven't seen flea markets down here. And that's funny because in Jersey, they had, um, and they had, they used to have like stores they call flea markets. I went to Pendergrass. I didn't think that was a flea market at all. It was way too many people. It was hot. Um, I didn't see a lot of anything. Everything was on the inside pretty much. On the outside, there was nothing. I didn't like it. I was like, this is not a flea market. Um, but I watched Flea Market Flip. I love Flea Market Flip. Me and my husband watch it all the time. He want to go and create stuff. Like, he done, he done picked up stuff off the side of the road that he's going to be changing over. It's still sitting in the garage, y'all. It's still sitting. He got this thing, though. It looked like it came out of a movie theater. I said to him, we need to sell that. So my uncle's like, yeah, just sell it with the poster. And it, the poster that's in there is from a 19, um, I don't know if it's like 85 movie. or I know Keanu Reeves was in it, and he was really, really young. Like, really young. And that's the poster. So that's the original post and the original uh, movie thing that came from the movie. So he said he was going to do something. That's like, we should just sell it just like that. And then we got these chairs. They're really cute chairs. We paid like 60 cents for them or something. Um, and he's going to reupholster those and do something with them. I don't know. We got these lamps and lampshades. And so we got stuff that we could probably redo. And I'm going to have some time soon. So I'm going to have time on the weekend so we can tackle something. Because I, I ain't going to lie. I got a whole bunch of decoupage and plates upstairs that I have not done but one plate for. Yeah, it didn't come out that good. So I wasn't excited about it. But I, that's because I didn't perfect it. I didn't perfect it. I'm going to work on it, though. Anyway. If you want to go to the little uh, little burn yard sale, that's going to be September the nineteenth. But you must register to get the twenty dollar rate before September the fourth. After that, it's going to be September. It's going to be thirty dollars. And again, go to um, you can go to the website to do that. The city's website, and that's the city of com. You'll find more information there. All right, I'm going to my last song. I'll be right back after the song to give you my word of inspiration for the day. Stay tuned. But I don't dare to, I'm too fragile, and for that I do apologize. Maybe someday we can work it out, but I'm afraid it's too late to try. Baby, I don't dare to love you, and you know the reason why. Don't you know I'm way too weak to swim? Can't you feel the waves come crashing in? Running out of safety nets, cause every night, every night. Maybe someday we could work it out, but I'm afraid it's too late to try. Maybe I don't dare to love you, and you know the reason why. Don't you know I'm way too weak to swim? Can't you feel the waves come crashing in? Running out of safety nets, cause every night, every night. I fall down in the middle of the night, screaming, oh my God, cause you love too deep. You know you love.
Welcome back, welcome back. So listen, guys, that's all I got for you. But before I go, I want to give you my word of inspiration for the day. And here goes. Failure would never overtake me if my determination to succeed, to succeed is strong enough. Let me say that again. Failure would never take me if my determination to succeed is strong enough. Og Magdino said that and he was absolutely right. Let me tell you something. People think of failure. Some people think of failure as it's the end. It's over. It's done. I failed. Nope. 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 When you fail, you get back up and you start again. You know how many times I failed in the last 23 years? I just failed probably last month. I failed so many times. It's unbelievable. But here's the thing. I'll never stop till I get to the goal. Never. When when they put me in the box, I'll probably still be trying. I'll probably get to heaven and I'll still be up there doing my thing. Because you don't quit when you fail. You keep going. You look at what happened. You make an assessment of the situation. You do better the next time around. But you don't quit. Failure is not an option. It's an opportunity to learn from your experience. That's what it is. That's all it is. It's not an option, but it's an opportunity. And sometimes people just look at failure and they feel like it's over. It's done. I failed. I can't go on. Nah, you fail. Get up. Brush yourself off. Start again. That's all you got to do. I could go on and on about failure because I know a little something about failure. Let me tell you, it's been 23 years I've been in this entrepreneur game. 23. And let me tell you, I've had a million failures in 23 years. But I don't stop and I don't quit. I just make the adjustments. And yeah, I get beat down. I'm tired. You know, I want to just quit sometimes. And I say, nope, you can't do it. And not, not only that, I don't want to. Like, I be pissed off at sometimes. Like, oh, why am I doing this? I should just go do this. But then I, and that lasts probably a good hot second. And then I was like, yep, not doing that. Because if I do that, I can't watch my granddaughter when they need me to. I can't take my mom to the doctor when she need me to. I can't keep my, my uncle calm from every TV commercial that he sees on TV about something that's ailing him. I can't. I can't be there with my husband when we need to, when we want to just get up and go. I can't do those things. Yes, this is not a super easy life, but it's one that I'm dedicated to and committed to and can't really see myself doing anything else, nor do I want to. So failure is never going to overtake me. Because I'm determined to succeed and you should be too. That's all I got for you today. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. to bring you more of the rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. And I got a guest tomorrow, so you want to listen in. She's been in, she, listen, she's probably been in the game just as long as I have. And I'm sure she, she, has, she knows a lot about failure and success at the same time. Now, here's the thing. There's, there are levels of success. I am successful in certain, at certain levels. I'm going to the next level right now. All right? That's what success is. Success is a journey. You never get there. I don't care. You can ask the richest person in the world, are they successful? I guarantee you they're still striving for something. I don't care what it is, something that they're still striving for that they feel like they not they have not reached a level of success in. I guarantee you. They could be the richest person. It could be something in their relationship that they want to be successful in. I'm telling you. it could, Because it's, it's, it's a destination. It's, I mean, it's a journey. You're never going to get there. Here's the thing. As long as you hit the levels, that's a good thing. I'll be back again tomorrow. If you missed any episode of the show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com and check out past episodes there. If you got a comment for me, if you got a, a birthday shout-out, an anniversary shout-out, you got you got a comment about something that you heard on the show, go there, click on your story, click on the little purple microphone on the right-hand side to share your story, and I'll be happy to bring Now, listen, if you share some crazy story, I'm not going to talk about it on this show. I'm going to delete it. And get rid of it. But if you got a good story or you got an opinion about something that's not vulgar, racist, defaming, demeaning, we can talk about it. I, I can talk about it. So share it with me. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Got to go. Listen, y'all stay safe out there. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. God willing, until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.